sponsored by Siemens Digital Industry Software. Learn more about their simulation and test solutions by clicking the links in the description. Build a better tomorrow faster with SimCenter. Hello everyone, and welcome to this tutorial series for the conjugate heat transfer of heat sinks. Heat sinks, as we know, are a very important part of almost all the equipment that are being used and require direct air cooling. In convective heat transfer, heat sinks play a vital role in basically taking out the heat and cooling the electronic equipment they are used in. They are used in different computers, LED applications, microprocessors, PCBs, PGAs, LGAs, like all sorts of electronic equipment require some form of heat sinks. Today, we are going to look into the conjugate heat transfer for a heat sink. Conjugate heat transfer refers to the transfer of heat between a fluid and a solid that are in contact with each other. CFD is a numerical method used to simulate fluid flow and heat transfer. And we are going to utilize Star CCM Plus, which is a commercial CFD software. And that can be used to simulate conjugate heat transfer. Heat transfer basically happens whenever air gets in touch with the solid metallic parts. It is used for all different complex behaviors of the fluid flow around the fins. CFD allows for the simulation of complex geometries and boundaries that are difficult or impossible to replicate experimentally, and it could take a while or a longer time. We can also get really good information about temperature and flow fields within a heatsink, and that can be used to optimize the design for better thermal performance. Also, we can, within the simulation using CFD, investigate the effects of different materials, geometries, and operating conditions on the thermal performance of a heatsink. Also, we can apply different operating conditions like if we are in an ambient temperature of 30 degrees, 50 degrees, 55 degrees. Most electronic equipment requires functionality to be around 40, 55 degrees Celsius. And sometimes when we move into colder regions, those requirements go down, like sometimes it's 20, 25. And even when we have some equipment being operated in the very coldest regions around the world, like in Canada, we might need to have an ambient of like minus 10. That is good for heatsink performance. But here, I'm just talking about different operating conditions that we can easily simulate. And we don't need to do a bunch of experimentations to basically find the optimal operating points. So today, we're going to look into different case studies that have been done, and we're going to choose one of the profiles from here. So in this paper, we have almost six different cases that they performed experiments on. A has the flat fins, then in B, the number of fins increased, similar in C, then from D to F, pins along with flat plates are introduced into the design. And these are different dimensions that we can find in this paper. Also, the model that we're going to use is going to be the K Omega SST model, which basically is for a fully developed circular air jet. Okay, and this is the model that, for this paper, we're going to employ in our system. Let's begin. Now, we are going to create the geometry for our simulation. First of all, we are going to define a very initial sketch. The sketch is going to be for the pin fin and the flat plate fin that we saw in the paper. We are going to use the type E configuration from this paper, which has the best characteristics according to the research, with seven fins and 8.5 millimeter fin spacing. So, let's define our geometry and let's begin our work. First, we are going to create a new part. Let's wait for it to open. Let's make the view's projection parallel, and in the XY plane, we are going to create the first rectangle. Let's give the spacing of 200 millimeter to the length and the thickness to be 10 millimeter. Now let's define our geometry for the pin fin. Let's move this here. The distance needs to be five millimeter. We are going to define this as 10 millimeter and this dimension is again going to be 10 millimeter. So our basic sketch has been defined. Let's click OK. In the next step, we are going to basically extrude these by about, let's first extrude and we are going to go 90 meter, click OK. So we have this defined, we are going to go back. We are going to first define the linear pattern for this one. So let's go to the body group. Let's name it flat plate fin and pin fin. Let's create a linear pattern for this. We need the direction for them to be along the x-axis. The distance that we are going to use is 37.2 millimeters. This is going to give the fin spacing of 8.5 millimeters from one to the next. And in instances, we are going to have a four for these. And next, we are going to define the linear pattern for the pin fin. First of all, we need to define the linear pattern along the y-axis. So let's define a linear pattern. For that, what we are going to do is that our directional axis is going to be the y-axis. So enable the y-axis and to get 8.5 mm of spacing, let's do that. All right, let's click OK. Now what we are going to do, we are going to basically create a linear pattern of the pin fins along the x-axis, linear pattern. So I just have a bad thought today. It is going to be 37 meters and we need about three. So we have seven fins. These flat fins are basically created into fin pins. So that defines our geometry. And for the fins, now we need to create basically a pattern base of the heat sink. So for that, we are going to go into the sketch mode. Now bring up the pattern from the bottom and let's move edge to edge to define our geometry. Let's do that. Let's make these collinear. 
These two edges are going to be also collinear. Let's make this collinear constraint. Collinear. Click. OK. Now, we are going to extrude it by 10 millimeters. OK. So, our geometry for the heat sink is defined. Now, we are going to create a bounding region for this, basically a domain. So, let's create a new body group. New block. Let's move it towards the center. OK. Now, let's give it, let's say, 200 minutes on this side. This will be looking good. Let's make 300 millimeters on this side and 200 millimeters on this side and just move it down a bit. OK. So, our bounding box for the area is defined. Let's name the walls for the fluid domain. Let's name it domain back. Let's name it domain front. Domain side one. Domain side two. Domain top. Domain bottom. So we have assigned names to the faces of our fluid domain. Now, what we need to do is we need to define the name for the heat sink bottom as well. So let's hide this face and select the bottom. Name it heat sink bottom. Let's name this air. Let's name this heat sink. And now we are going to create a Boolean function create, subtract, and the target body is going to be the air, and the tool body is heat sink. We are going to keep the tool body as we are going to apply the material. Update, and let's unhide, and let's see if we have any issue. Now let's bring up the ZX plane as well. Yeah, we have pretty much good clearance from the bottom. So, our system has been defined. Now let's head over to the next step. We'll create regions for both fluid and air. Let's name the first region air and the second heat sink. Select heat sink as a solid region and air as a fluid region. Next, we'll define the continuum for both solid and fluid. Rename the first to air and the second to heat sink. Now let's define the regions. For the heat sink, select the physics and click heat sink, then OK. Remember to save your work. For the air physics model, we'll choose a K omega SST model since this is a 3D model with turbulent heat transfer. Select three dimensional, gas, coupled flow, and constant density. Enable gravity and include coupled energy. Let's set the initial conditions. For natural convection, use 1 meter per second velocity along the y-axis. To visualize this, create a new scene for the geometry. Set the static temperature to 293 Kelvin. For the heat sink, we're dealing with a three-dimensional solid, steady, and coupled solid energy with constant density. Use the default thermal conductivity of 237. Set the heat sink's static temperature to 358.15 Kelvin, which is 85 degrees 6 typical for server cooling conditions. With the physics defined, we'll move on to boundary conditions and interfaces in the next section. Let's create the boundary conditions. Create a new one and name it Side Domain Sides. Select the pot surfaces, Side 1 and Side 2. We'll apply the thermal specification on these sides, considering a continuous domain towards the right and left. Apply a temperature of 293K here. Next, we'll create a boundary for the heat sink bottom. Select Heat Sink Bottom. This will be a temperature source set at 358.15K. Let's save our file. Now we have all the necessary boundary conditions defined. In the next step, we'll define the interface. Now, we'll create an interface between the solid and fluid regions. First, go to the Parts section, then Update Interface, and click on Update Boundary Mode Interface. After this, two interfaces are created. The first interface is between the heating region and the fluid domain, which isn't our focus. We're interested in the interface between the fins and the fluid region, which is interface two. This is how we've created an interface between the solid and fluid regions. Now, let's create different reports and scenes we're looking for. First, we'll create a report for heat transfer. We're looking for a region that's essentially a boundary between solid and air. This will come from the interface region we created earlier. It'll show us the heat transfer happening between the solid and fluid regions through that thin boundary between the heat sink and air. Next, we'll create a surface average temperature report. This will be a report of the fluid. We'll select a temperature function, and for the parts, it'll be our air region. Click OK. Now we'll create a monitor and plot from the reports. These will be multiple plots. After that, we'll create different scalar scenes. One will be for the solid temperature, for solid heat transfer. We'll set the control style to smooth filled. The parts will be the heat sink parts. Click OK. Then we'll create two different planes, two derived parts. One normal to the y-axis and the second normal to the z-axis. We'll use these planar sections in some of our scalar scenes. To create these, go to New Part, Create Section, and Plane. 
From here, select the appropriate axis and enable or disable as needed. Finally, we'll create a scalar field for fluid temperature. Set it to smooth filled. For parts, we can select both planes and the solid heat sink region. This will give us a comprehensive view of the temperature field, showing how heat transfers from the solid to the fluid region. Let's name it temperature. Now, let's generate the mesh. We'll initialize the mesh, generate the surface mesh, and then create the volume mesh. While the mesh is generating, let's discuss a critical aspect of the reports we typically create. In the reports section, for each report we've created for heat transfer and fluid temperature, we need to ensure that we have the latest volume enabled for the representation. This is crucial for 3D simulations. Without it, we won't see any trend lines in the reports or monitor plots we've created. If it's set to the latest surface instead of volume, we'll miss out on important data. So, after the volume mesh generation is complete, we need to double check our reports. Make sure the representation is set to the latest volume, not the latest surface. Let's give the mesh a few more seconds to finish. All right, it's done. If it's not auto-selected, we need to manually set it to volume mesh here. Let's click Save. And now we're ready to start the solution and see the results. We'll start by initializing the solution. Then we'll click on Step. After that, we'll run the simulation. It will take a few minutes, so let's wait for it to finish. The simulation has finished. Now, let's explore the results we've received. First, we'll take a reference to understand what we're expecting from the results. On this screen, you can see our fins are very reddish hot, and the air shows heat transfer happening around them. We'll see this colorful gradient for the heat sink and surrounding air. Looking at the results, this is the solid temperature for our heat sink. Now let's check the control plots we created to analyze the heat transfer. We'll observe the temperature gradient for the surrounding air. Let's change the view's projection mode to parallel. As you can see, the fins are quite reddish hot, and the 1 meter per second velocity isn't sufficient in our case. This tells us that natural convection for this heat loss isn't enough. We'd need to move towards forced convection to cool this heat sink better. This natural convection analysis is giving us this result. We've nearly reached the saturation point for the air surrounding the heat sink. A similar temperature gradient profile can be seen on the top control as well. This demonstrates how we can perform conjugate heat transfer simulation. We can also check the heat transfer report we created, showing the total heat at the interface between the solid and air surfaces. This saturation level shows the wattage of heat being transferred, which is insufficient to cool the heat sink. If we're doing product analysis for a company, we definitely need a fan to cool this down. I hope this tutorial gives you a better understanding of how to perform conjugate heat transfer simulation for heat sinks and similar products. Thank you for watching.